Opening ceremonies for the Camp Reynolds 50th anniversary began at 6 o'clock on June 23rd and took place at the former location of the Camp Reynolds headquarters on 10th Street. Despite the rainy weather, a crowd of 150 turned out for the evening's events. Thanks for coming out in the rainstorm. Uh, not too nice an evening. We ordered better weather in this, but they didn't ship it through for us. We'd like to uh, welcome you to the 50th anniversary of Camp Reynolds. Uh, pardon? Can you hear us up there? Up a little bit. At this time, I'd like to recognize the uh, committee that helped put this on. Greg Coxon, George Lecision, Helen Lecision, Lincoln Huber, Esther Watterson, May Miller, Artie Williams, Lloyd Barker, Thomas Clintia, Sally Lecision, Blanche Williams, Howard Hillman, Earl Miller, Patricia Clintia, Marina Lees, Shirley Tom, uh, Tomac, and Shirley Keeley, Jack Bershmeyer, and Pedro Norchak, and uh, John Barker. At this time, we'll have the uh, flag raising ceremony by the uh, color guard of the uh, VFW Post 7599. Sergeant First Class Tim McCall will now sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight or the
at this time, I would like to have retired Colonel Reverend John Woods give us a word. I'd like to have uh, Simon McCall to sing Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Okay, Simon McCall. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Thank you, Sergeant McCall. That's beautiful. If 
five can find it. And that's a little piece of glass. There's a little piece of glass. That's out of Hitler's window. I picked that up in Bertus Garden. And uh, I keep that as a little souvenir. May not mean anything to anybody else, but it does to me. When I think of the GIs that I buried in Europe because of this idiot, and he came, and God will take care of him. Don't worry about that. I'm sure. Whatever he deserves, he will get for causing so much trouble. Well, I want to tell you something. Greater love is no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Our Lord said that in the sixth chapter of St. John. Greater love is no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, there's not enough gold in Fort Knox, Kentucky. Not enough gold in the world to pay for one single life that was given for this beloved country of ours. Our, our beloved friends and loved ones who, who gave their lives, their lives are not for sale. They gave out of their hearts. They are not here. But as I stood over the graves of many, of many of us, soldiers. Yes, a few women too. And when you think of the life that they gave for us, that we can stand in this rain today, we are, we are grateful. And I'm sure that Almighty God, in His greatness and in His mercy, He did not create us to forget us. Almighty God created you and me, each one. No one has ever made a man or a child that comes from heaven. God created us, and he loves us, and he cares for us. Now, that's the kind of a sermon that I preach to the G.I., just like I'm talking to you today. And now, I'm going to close with this benediction. And I want you to participate in it. And I'm going to say this. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And you're going to say, thanks be to God. Now, let's do it quietly, and then I didn't have the sound off big and loud. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And then you say, thanks be to God. Okay. Got that now? Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.
and not get carried away with a lot of uh, uh, emotionalism. Uh, what I'll be sharing with you are direct uh, printings and writings of, of some of Earl's writings uh, that he left uh, and, and uh, has put down, not that he's gone anywhere, but it, that, that he's given us in the most recent writings in, in the record Argus with the oncoming of, of this event. Uh, and this is a, an attempt to recall some of the high spots of the story of the parade ground of millions of passing faces which came out of the sprouting potato field uh, to become Pennsylvania's second largest military installation. It all began on the 23rd day of June in 42 when the United States engineers came and uh, were surveying the area. And when Earl asked them what they were up to, they were very passive and non-committal. But it was only a couple of days later that it was announced by the Army that the camp would be placed here and they were surveying for that. Acquisition began. Uh, there were 35 farms involved. They paid an average of $70 an acre or a total of $182,000 for the property. Um, the camp was originally known as the Shenango Personnel Replacement Depot. Its site was chosen primarily because of its location, its good railroads accessibility, its proximity to the East Coast, its relatively wild, mild winters, and the topography which permitted the kinds of training that was needed for a, a military installation. Uh, granting of the, uh, the, the order was given on January 23rd, 1942, and, and construction started some only seven days later. Would we like to see some of that to happen at this point uh, with some of our public works projects? Uh, the engineers were Gannett Fleming in Harrisburg and the contractors with Mellon Stewart out of Pittsburgh. Uh, the, at the time, the town's population was 8,000, and by 1943, it grew to 13,000, almost a 60% increase. Uh, almost 5,000 employees worked on the camps at Redia, and as it was, became ready and the troops became available, the civilians were phased out and the military took over. Initially, it was built for 30,000 people, persons. Uh, that then was extended for an additional 30,000, and then it was uh, also expanded to accommodate another 30,000, which would have made it a grand total of 90,000. By the time the camp was completed, there were 1,000 buildings, 25 uh, miles of paved highway, 18 miles of sewer line, uh, 10 miles of electric line, 25 miles of water line, and also six lines which just connected that, all those to the building. The sewage disposal plant, as we know it, was here uh, to accommodate a city, a city the size of Cairns. The water department was, had two 250,000 gallon water tanks, and they still are in existence and in use. The original cost was $3 million, at least as that was, was, was anticipated, but there are reports that show that there was expenditures in Mercer County of that, in that particular year for military use for 19 million, which might be a more realistic price. Uh, on July 1, bids totaling $624,000 were accepted uh, for the dwellings, which we now know as Faith Terrace. It accommodated 180 families, 10 dormitory units for civilian employees uh, at the camp. The first officer here was uh, Colonel G.H. Sutterman, who came October 1st in 42. Later on, in 43, Colonel Jim Lawhall uh, was named as the post commander, and he came from the from uh, what we know now as the Pentagon, but from the general staff of the War Department. Uh, it was under his command that Camp Reynolds, uh, was, whose name was changed from Penango Personnel Redeployment or Deployment Depot to the Camp Reynolds, as we have come to know the name. Uh, there was also POWs here at the camp. Uh, on April 4th, 1944, uh, it was occupied by 1,200 German prisoners and it was discontinued uh, later that year. Um, during the heyday, there were post offices, libraries, published the newspaper, uh, an arm of the record Argus, and the paper appeared a weekly uh, on a monthly uh, for 18 months. Uh, the Victory News uh, kept the 75,000 troops here informed. Uh, and uh, was the, the media organ for for the community as well as, as the camp. Uh, the USO put money into two different facilities, one in Greenville and one in Sharon. The one in Greenville is well known uh, and is still part of the rec center complex. Over 475,000 troops used that facility at one time. 
Uh, Camp Reynolds also saw parade of outstanding uh, persons who came through here. None the least were Judy Garland, Wayne King, Benny Goodman, uh, Seth, Seth Will Armstrong and his band. Uh, other persons that came through to entertain the troops were boxers like Joe Lewis, Sugar Ray Robinson, Tony Galente, and Fritzy Zivic. And anybody from Pittsburgh knows Fritzy because they later named, uh, he also owned a uh, uh, boxing arena down there. Thank you, John. Not for me, but for my notes. <laughs> Care to see the rival brothers. Something else I backed into. Uh, by the time that the camp stays were, were completed, there were uh, over a million persons that passed through this, this particular facility. Um, even though there were that number, the camp never really reached its capacity of 90,000. Uh, the residents stayed for only a short time, some for several days, but few over several weeks. On the ninth day of January of 45, with victory in Europe in sight, the War Department designated Camp Reynolds inactive. Almost overnight, a once bustling, bustling community of 75,000 took on the appearance of a ghost town. Although the soldiers were gone, the past memories linger on. Many concerned, concerned forward-looking Greenville business and civic leaders desire to see the campsite uh, rather than it be returned to the potato fields from whence it came. Uh, these individuals had the foresight of it becoming a post-war industrial and commercial site. The visions are still paying off handsomely. Reynolds today is the site of hundreds of homes, dwelling more, dwellings for more than 2,000 residents and more than 35 industries and businesses. Reynolds' future is bright as it continues to build on the history of what certainly has been one of the most exciting chapters in the annals of Mercer County history. Thank you very kindly. I'm sorry that was so quick. Earl, I saw you come on the scene. Thank you. They were your words. Uh, we just sure didn't order this, but uh, we need it. 
We really need the rain, but we need it a little nice weather for about 45 minutes to an hour. Thanks again very much for coming. If you need any souvenirs or anything, see anybody on the truck or one of the men here with a badge on, they'll see that you're taken care of. Thanks again to everybody, all the business and so on who help. We certainly appreciate your help. And thanks again for coming out. Following the opening ceremonies, everyone was invited to the Reynolds High School to view historical displays at Camp Reynolds. These displays included many pictures and newspapers, as well as items that were actually used by soldiers at the camp.
Wednesday's activities began early in the afternoon with bus tours of the former camp area. The historical displays were moved from the high school and were open for viewing at the Reynolds VFW. There, residents and veterans came together to share the memories of Camp Reynolds. The afternoon's other activities included face painting by clowns and the selling of souvenirs.
From 4.30 until 7, there was a picnic at the Reynolds VFW Pavilion. Hamburgers and hot dogs, as well as other tasty foods, were served. Later that evening, Joe Can and his eight-piece band provided the music and set the mood for the big band era dance. Couples filled the dance floor as the band played favorite selections. There was also a USO show, which helped to bring back memories of the entertainment during World War II.
Thursday was the third and final day of the celebration. The historical displays were again open from the early afternoon to the early evening. The highlights of the day's events were the parade and the fireworks display. A large crowd gathered along the parade route, which began at Brentwood Drive near the Reynolds High School and ended at the VFW. Over 40 units, including a band, color guards, and fire departments participated.
Following the parade, several proclamations were read. It was changed to Camp Reynolds in honor of Major General John Fulton Reynolds, who was killed on July the 1st, 1863, the second day of fighting during the Battle of Gettysburg. Since Camp Reynolds was never designated doing? to be permanent, on July the 9th, 1945, the War Department designated Camp Reynolds as an inactive installation. Signed huh? Joseph Fraggle, Olivia Laser, okay. and William Resner. Senator Bob Robbins. Have a proclamation here, a letter from uh, Congressman Tom Ridge that I'd like to read. Yeah, it's from the Congress of the United States House of Representatives. Whereas Camp Reynolds, previously known as Shenango Personnel Replacement Depot, is proudly celebrating its 50th anniversary. The depot was renamed Camp Reynolds on September 21, 1943, to honor the memory of Major General John Fulton Reynolds, a West Point graduate and a native of Lancaster, PA. General Reynolds was killed in action on July 3, 1863, the second day of fighting during the Battle of Gettysburg, and whereas Camp Reynolds was originally constructed to house 30,000 troops and later expanded to house another 30,000 and still later expanded to include a final total of 90,000 men. A POW camp was established April 4, 1944 and had been occupied by about 1,200 German prisoners before it was discontinued in 1944. By the time the camp was disbanded, more than one million men had passed through its gates on their way from boot camp to the European War Theater. The soldiers stayed at Camp Reynolds for periods ranging for, from only a few days to a week, and whereas once Amer American victory in Europe was secured, the War Department deactivated Camp Reynolds, causing the Greenville business community and civic leaders to consider industrial and resident residential development. The development plan took root and today Reynolds Development continues to add to its industrial and residential base, making it a model in development and planning. Now therefore the Congressman Tom Ridge extends warm congratulations to Camp Reynolds on their 50th anniversary with the hope that we'll continue to grow and prosper and further directs that a copy of this document be transmitted to Camp Reynolds in recognition of their uh, anniversary attest. Tom Ridge, member of Congress. I also have one from the Senate of Pennsylvania, and instead of reading all the contents again, I'd just like to read, whereas Camp Reynolds is observing the joyous occasion of its 50th anniversary with the celebration on June 23rd, 25th, 1992. And then the whereas is talking about the establishment of the camp, and of course the numbers and the history. And then it says, Senator of Pennsylvania, now therefore extend congratulations to Camp Reynolds on his joyous and momentous golden anniversary. Proudly notes that the men and women of Camp Reynolds who, through exemplary citizenship, manifest the highest ideals and aspirations of this commonwealth. Respectfully acknowledge, acknowledges Camp Reynolds' outstanding contribution to the cause of freedom throughout the world and directs that a copy of this document sponsored by myself, Senator Robert D. Robbins, be transmitted to the Camp Reynolds 50th Anniversary Committee and attested to by Mark R. Corrigan, Secretary of the Senate of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Bob. As a state representative in Western Pennsylvania, it's my pleasure to be here tonight and to represent my fellow delegation of Mercer County representatives, Howard Fargo, Mike Gritza, and Frank LaGrotta. And it's certainly an honor for me to bring a citation from the State House of Representatives, the oldest assembly in our nation's country, in our nation, over 300 years of continuous service. And I'd like to take this moment not only to present this citation, but to ask you, along with me, to reflect on this moment and on this time and what it stood for. As we stand here tonight on our Commonwealth soil here at Camp Reynolds, we think in terms of the great battles and the great moments in history in this Commonwealth. From the founding fathers of the Liberty Bell and our Constitution in Philadelphia, to the first major fight for our independence in Valley Forge, again here in our great commonwealth. 
and we think of that great battle, the Civil War in Gettysburg, let us add this moment and this place to that great lineage of history. And let us not forget those brave soldiers, men, airmen, Marines, sailors, and those who have especially called Mercer County their home. As I was looking at some of the memorabilia inside the VFW, I was struck by the numbers of Mercer County young men who gave their lives. Almost 300, 283 from Mercer County were listed in that paper. And let us not forget those men and women. Their families are here in this community today. And we want to thank them for the sacrifice that they gave for our great country. And for this, we shared with you tonight from the Commonwealth, and I shared and bring you this word and this tiding of respect from the Assembly of the State of Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. The rest of the time was spent viewing displays or by playing bingo set up at the VFW shelter. The festivities concluded at dusk with an exciting fireworks display along Crestview Drive. 